Hello, I'm Brian, WB9QVR for the World Beyond 7.121. Today we're going to talk about something that many hams have, including me, and that is an antenna box. In it we keep odds and ends and various things for constructing antennas ready to go for field day, for some sort of camping operation, or perhaps for just building antennas at home. And today I'm going to show you 15 handy items that I keep in my antenna box that perhaps will give you some ideas. That's coming up next on The World Beyond 7.121. Now the first thing we're going to include in our antenna box, and this will probably make you say, duh, but I'm going to start off with the obvious, is antenna wire. In this case, it happens to be Army Surplus Field Phone Wire, and over the years I've used this for many wire antennas. It's inexpensive, it's strong, probably not the best conductor, but it certainly does the job. It can also be used for radials for a vertical antenna, just a handy type of wire to have around. But it, most any wire that you can get easily and inexpensively will work. Just be sure to have plenty of it so you can build those giant antennas when you'd like. The next handy item to have in your antenna box is coax and probably some parallel feed line. You'll want to get some various length coax jumpers depending upon the situation you might find yourself in. I usually try to get three to five foot versions. And of course you'll need some longer spool of coax, preferably with connectors already attached if you're going to take this to field day. And that obviously is to connect the antenna to your rig. So with that and the jumpers you should be ready to go. But the one thing that many people overlook, especially new hams, is that they tend to not think about parallel feed line. Parallel feed line or balance line, or in this case it's called window line, is very handy for building multi-band dipole or really doublet antennas. It's great, inexpensive, extremely low loss as compared to coax, and can get, allow you to get a multi-band antenna in the air literally in a matter of minutes if you have to build it from scratch. This particular one already has a T connector built in, which I'll show you in a little more detail in just a bit. So I can put it up in the air simply by attaching the wire and I'm off and running. Something you should always have available to build a wire antenna, a doublet, loop, what have you, just about any time, are some end insulators, um, perhaps the standard egg style, which are like these. And you can get these online from various sources. You can even purchase, as I did in this case, uh, an entire bag of them at a ham fest for a reasonable price. Uh, they're obviously meant to be end insulators, but you could, in a pinch, use them as a center insulator. Coming up in this video, I'll be talking about some products that are commercially available for sale. I just want to take this opportunity to point out that my channel is not sponsored by any company or products, that the items I'll be talking about I purchased with my own money to put in my own antenna box for my own purposes. Now on with the show. Something I like to keep on hand are some products from DX Engineering. This is their proprietary end insulator. It's very well designed. It's easy to loop a wire through one side and a rope on the other. And again, one of these on each end of the dipole or doublet. And then they have their center insulator. In this case, I'm using it with 450 ohm window line, but it can also be used with 300 ohm twin lead. And I'll show you an entire kit with that in just a bit. The, if you have in, in, in the insulators, center insulators and wire, you have virtually everything you need to build an antenna. Again, in the field, for field day, build it at home, build it for a friend. You have most of what you need and it's relatively inexpensive to put these parts together. One of the things that I like to keep around in my kit, and again, I do want to stress this is not sponsored. I have purchased this with my own money for my own purposes, is an entire multi-band dipole kit from DX Engineering. This kit contains not only the center insulator and the end insulators and wire, it also contains 100 feet of 300 ohm twin lead. This is everything in one package to build an antenna, in this particular case, from 80 meters on up that you can put together quickly in the field. So again, I like to keep one of these in my kit ready to go. 
Now, obviously, if you're going to be building a doublet or a dipole, you're going to need some way of suspending it in the air. And obviously, that is going to involve some sort of rope. Now, I usually keep two different kinds of rope in my kit. I keep dark colored rope, such as this, for instances where I don't want the rope to be seen, typically in a home installation, so my neighbors don't see the rope in the trees. But I also keep very brightly colored rope for those situations like field day where I can I have high visibility on this rope for safety purposes and also to make it easier to retrieve the rope later. There have been a number of times in the past where I've used dark colored rope which is difficult to be seen in the brush and through the trees and it, sometimes it makes it difficult or impossible to retrieve the rope later. So in those instances you also want to keep in your kit some brightly colored or even multicolored rope. And if you're going to be working with rope, one of the things that you'll definitely want to keep in your antenna box is a good pair of gloves. These can come in very handy for saving your skin, literally saving your skin, when you're pulling those ropes up and down to hang the antennas in the trees. I admit, I like to build wire loop antennas anytime I can. So one of the items I keep in my kit to help me in that regard are carabiners. These can be purchased just about any hardware store, online, you name it. What I like to do is lay out the wire loop on the ground roughly in the shape that I want, then I attach the rope to carabiners, pull the rope over the trees, and snap this onto the outside perimeter of the loop and just simply hoist the loop in the air. But they have a number of other uses. Again, cheap, easy to come by, good to have some of these in your kit. So what do SpongeBob golf balls have to do with amateur radio? Well, normally nothing, except I found that by taking some string and some duct tape, taping the string to this brightly colored golf ball, I can use this as a throw weight to get it over a branch of a tree. Very handy, hard to lose with a color like that. And again, gives you an option for just chucking something over a tree very quickly. Any brightly colored golf ball will do. Again, you want to be able to retrieve this when you see it in the brush, but I happen to like the SpongeBob ones. Another way to get a rope over a tree is something that arborists have done for many, many years, and that's a weighted throw bag and a throw line. I keep this in my antenna box for getting those ropes really high in the tree. You can either throw it by hand, or if you've got a large slingshot like I do, you can use this to really zing it up 75, 80, 100 feet without any problem. It's great for getting those field day doublets and loops way up off the ground. Again, not expensive, handy to have, but it is weighted, so be careful when you throw this because you could quite literally bean someone in the head. Speaking of safety, something especially for field day or other types of portable operation where you're going to be stringing wires or perhaps having radials along the ground for a vertical, always have a roll of caution tape. This can be picked up from Walmart, various online sources. You want to be sure that people know that there's some wire or rope or something that's dangerous hanging there or perhaps on the ground. Again, cheap, cheap, a cheap way to highlight those items and to hopefully keep everyone safe. And of course, at the same time, keep your wires and rope where you want them. Of course, we all know the adage, duct tape or duct tape, whichever you prefer, can fix everything. That's true with antennas too. I like to use this to secure ropes to my throw weights or to just simply hold things together. And again, I like to use brightly colored duct tape so that it can be seen and also enhances the safety factor. So if you're at home though, you might wanna choose something other than duct tape or at least use a darker color to keep from calling your neighbor's attention to the wires you have in the air. If you're putting up a support for a vertical or perhaps putting stakes in the ground to tie off ropes or that sort of thing, you'll always want to have a rubber mallet. This is a handy item to have. Now that being said, I would caution you against driving stakes into a ground at any location where there's any potential, particularly if it hasn't been surveyed, for underground wires or buried lines of any kind. Be sure before you puncture the ground that you know what's under there. 
Something else that it's difficult to have too many of in your antenna kit are tie wraps. You should try to keep various lengths, various colors on hand. You never know when these might come in handy for securing a piece of feed line or a rope or the wire itself for that matter. It's always good to have these. Again, cheap, easy to come by, can come in very handy at times. If you're going to be cutting antenna wire or radials to length, one of the things you will want in your antenna box is a long tape measure. I would recommend at least 100 feet, if possibly even longer if you're going to be building antennas for 160 or, or perhaps a large loop. This is something I've forgotten in the past and then I've had to simply guess at the length. So again, very handy, keep it in your box, ready to go. If you're going to be building wire antennas in the field, you also might consider having a couple of different types of ballons in your kit. This particular one is an older W2AU style ballon, which can actually work as the center insulator for a dipolar doublet. It has a coax feed on the bottom, outlets for wires here. Another ballon that I like to keep in my kit is this four to one ballon from LEG, which allows me to connect window line, twin lead, some type of balanced feed line to a device, whether it's your rig, antenna tuner, really it's a transmatch, to any device really that has a coaxial input. This is great for building multiband doublets, loops, any type of balanced line fed antenna. Earlier we talked about the need for a rubber mallet in your kit. Well, if you're gonna have a rubber mallet, you should probably have some stakes to drive into the ground. These are handy and I like using them because they are high visibility. I recommend high visibility in any temporary installation. Again though, don't just drive these in the ground unless you're absolutely sure that you're not going to puncture something important in the ground below it. Last but certainly not least, you'll need a smattering. Yes, that's the official term, a smattering of basic hand tools. With some of the parts that I've talked about earlier in this video and a few basic hand tools, you'll be able to put some very nice, very efficient, high performance antennas up in the air, ready to go. But wait, there's more. One bonus item that I'd like to include in this list is the venerable 2 meter 440 J-pole antenna. This could be purchased or built ahead of time and put in your kit for those times when you're out, say, at a field day site and you're trying to talk someone in on the repeater and your HT just isn't quite making it. Hanging one of these from the tree is a great way to improve your signal. And that's it, 15 items, okay, 16 items that I recommend that everyone have in their antenna box. And if you have recommendations that you'd like to make to me for things that should go in my antenna box, please drop those below. So with apologies to Samuel L. Jackson, what's in your antenna box? For the world beyond 7.121, I'm Brian, WB9QBR.